Bible. Sorry to say it, but that is all, folks. It's all over. I think the uh, 5th of January will go down as the day to mark the death of the American Republic. What happened yesterday was no surprise to me. I posted a video a couple weeks ago, linked here, suggesting that in all likelihood, the Democrats would take both of the runoff seats in the Georgia Senate elections. I said that because of one of two possibilities. Either Joe Biden is the most charismatic presidential candidate we've seen, a guy who can pull 9 million more votes than Barack Obama, or there was large-scale voting fraud going on. Now, I'll leave it to you to decide which is more likely. Personally, I just don't see Joe Biden as a particularly charismatic guy, especially compared to Barack Obama. Nine million more votes. I find that hard to believe. Nevertheless, that's what happened yesterday. I'm filming this on Wednesday, January 6th. And I woke up this morning and I thought to myself, this must be what people felt like in the center and the left waking up in Germany on the 31st of January, 1933. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with European chronology, the Nazis took power on the 30th of January, 1933, when Adolf Hitler was invited to become chancellor, prime minister of the Weimar Republic. That was it. I mean, there were people who thought he could be contained, he would, the Nazis would mess up, others would come back. <laughs> there was no coming back. Once they got in power, they did what they needed to do to make sure they never were out of power. And that's what I think is going to happen in this country with the Democrat Party, at least at the national level. There's limits to what they can do at the local level. Limits, but they'll find ways. But at the national level, elections for president, elections in swing states that are necessary for control of the Senate and House, I don't think nationally the Republican Party can come back. It used to be that you could. The Democrats would overstep, overplay their hand, and there'd be a electoral reaction. We saw that in, in 2010. Uh, we saw that in 2016. That's what the election of Donald Trump was all about. But they're not going to let that happen again. That will never happen again. We'll never see another 2010 with regard to the House or the Senate or the Congress. We're never going to see another 2016. If Republicans are sitting out there thinking that, oh, you know, we'll get them in 2024, you know, they're going to mess up, they're going to do all this stuff that's going to drive people nuts, it's not going to matter. It would matter if the elections were open and fair. But if they're not, and they won't be, whatever they do, whatever missteps they make, will not matter. This was it. This is, in my view, the end of the line for a functioning, open, democratic American Republic. It's over. That's all folks. Period. End of story. They're already telling us. I looked through a bunch of reports today. We know what they're going to do. They're telling us what they're going to do. They're going to do away with the filibuster rules. They're going to add Supreme Court justices. My guess is four. Once they do that, they can reverse yeah. Heller decision, Second Amendment, gives you an individual right to bear arms. It was a 5-4 decision. If some municipality, Democrat-run municipality, passes a new law, it's challenged and goes to the Supreme Court. If it was 5-4 last time, what do you think it's going to be after they load the court with four more of their justices? Goodbye, individual right to bear arms. Gone. They've told us, you know, they're going to bring in D.C. as a state. They can do that pretty quickly. 
I think it's actually would be cons- unconstitutional. But once they get done with the court, that's not going to matter either. Ultimately, they'll probably br- bring in uh, Puerto Rico. The problem there would be I'm not convinced that majority of Puerto Ricans want to become a state. Some like the status they're in. Others would prefer to be independent. And as, as given the status they're in, there's always the option down the road of becoming independent. Once they become a state, you know, that's gone. So I, I don't think it's a closed, open and shut case with regard to Puerto Rico. But if they can pull that off, there's, you know, probably two more senators. That's four more Democrat senators. No filibuster. As I said, that's all, folks. It's all over. We know what they want to do with elections. They want to outlaw voter ID restrictions, which we have here in Florida where I live. Why, why was Florida the only swing state that the Democrats really tried to win where they failed? Because it has voter ID. Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Arizona do not. That's, that was the break. That's going to be gone. They'll pass laws. Every registered voter gets a mailed ballot, will receive a mailed ballot, and they're going to allow ballot harvesting. So after they send all these ballots out, they'll send people door to door to collect them. And if you're not quite sure what to do with it, they'll have agencies that'll tell you what to do with it. You know, see this guy with the D? See this woman with the D? See this... Be open to transgender person, non-binary person with a D. Vote for that person. That's it, folks. That's all, folks. It is all over. I think a lot of people on the right, Republicans, Trumpists, understand this, if not intellectually, in their gut, that something bad just happened to us. Uh, The nether Trumpers, never Trumpers, don't get it. The Never Trumpers remind me of uh, the National Association of German Jews. I think that's how it translates. I forget the exact. It was actually a German Jewish organization in the late 20s. It lasted until 1935, two years after Hitler took power, almost three, uh, that supported the Nazis and supported Adolf Hitler. They were good Jews. They were German nationalists. They actually liked the idea that Hitler wanted to get rid of Eastern European Jews from they would come in from Poland and, and other areas in the East, get them out. They didn't want them in there. They just wanted German Jews, German Jews who would move away from uh, Judaism and become just like other Germans, totally assimilated. That was their proposal. So they supported Hitler. They believed that, you know, Hitler wasn't, saying what he really wanted to do with Jews, that this was just political stuff to get the vote. You know, once he got into power, you know, he'd be okay. He'd just be another German nationalist. And they were German nationalists, German Jewish nationalists, but that would be fine. And they lived in this never never world, make-believe world, until November 1935, which I guess is right after the uh, Nuremberg Laws, when the leadership of this German Jewish organization was rounded up and thrown into concentration camps. At that point, it dawned on him, like, hmm, maybe supporting Hitler, you know, wasn't that good of an idea. And I think that's where the Never Trumpers are headed. They think that they've, you know, separated themselves from Trump and his clique, and therefore the Democrats are going to like them and appreciate them. They did during the election. But now they're going to get screwed as bad as all the other Republicans. Because that's it. That's all there is, folks. It is all over. 2016, whatever the problems with that election, and there are always irregularities in American elections, I believe, and I think I posted a video on that too once before, will be seen as the last sort of open, honest national election we had in this country. We're headed toward one-party rule. We're headed toward the Californication of the entire country. And you might think, Mike, you're an alarmist. How can you say that? I was born December 31st, 1951 in Philadelphia. The day I was born, we had a Republican mayor. He'd already been voted out of office in November, but he was 
in charge of a city until uh, early January. By the time I was christened in January 1952, the Democrats had taken over the city. And I sit here in retirement, Tampa, Florida. 69 years later, the Democrats still run the city of Philadelphia. Now, I'm not sh saying that they won every election since 1951 uh, on voter fraud. I'm just making the point that once they got into power, they pursued programs and techniques and things that have ensured that they've never since lost power. My entire life, they've run that city. We've seen it in California. We've seen it in other cities. I think Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Remember, we're just going on down there. You know when the last time Atlanta had a Republican mayor? It was Reconstruction back in the 19th century. Atlanta hasn't even had a white Democrat mayor since I think 1973. It's been almost 50 years. Not only do you have to be a Democrat to get elected in Atlanta, you have to be a black Democrat to get elected in Atlanta. The chance of a Republican ever becoming mayor of Atlanta or Chicago. But the only city I can think of where you, you break this mold from time to time is New York City, which has had a couple of Republicans. But the other places, once they get in, you never get them out. And what they're doing now at the national level is what they've done at the local level for decades, the state level for decades in California, and now they're going to do it at the national level. And that's all there is. It is over. The American Republic died. Well, actually it died on November 3rd. The final nails were driven into the lid of, lid of a coffin, the final two nails, yesterday in the Georgia runoffs. I'd like to hear what you think about all this in a comment. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, and I'm sure some people won't, give it a thumbs down. The country may not be free and open, but I remain that way. I don't block comments unless they're, you know, links to porn sites. I do block those. Uh, share the video with a friend. Hit the notification button so you can see when I post new videos. Subscribe to the channel. And until the next time, keep fighting.